Considered the most contaminated river in the world, the Citron River spans 5,020 square miles from one side of West Java to another. It has a delicate ecosystem that has been disrupted by human activities. Categorized as a tropical rainforest, this means that the Citron River is close to the equator, making it hot with average temperatures of 68 to 93 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity of the biome comes from its average rainfall, which is between 50 to 260 inches a year. Tropical rainforests have the highest biodiversity of all the biomes. It is home to tons of different species. It has a unique layer system consisting of the canopy, which is where 90% of the species will be found, the understory, where smaller trees and shrubs are located, and the forest floor. This part of the layer system receives only what little sunlight escapes from the upper layers, so not many plants can grow there. Because of human activity, the Citron River has become polluted, leading to the endangerment of many of its species. This includes the pencil spine urchin, the striped sea cucumber, and the beautiful leaf. Deforestation has led to the extinction of many species and their food supplies, creating competition between the remaining ones. These species like the goliath birdwing butterfly, the blue spotted tiger beetle, and the javan giant frog have evolved to suit the change in climate to sustain their needs. They have developed toxins, bright colors, and in some cases camouflage to save themselves from predators. They have also widened their food variety, allowing them to survive in more settings. The first environmental resource, energy, comes mostly from the river itself. Hydroelectricity is a renewable resource, meaning it will be replaced in a human's lifetime. This energy comes from three main dams located on different points in the Citron River, providing electricity to all the major cities located near the river. It is then used for lighting, heating, refrigeration, air conditioning, and powering. The second most commonly used type of energy is a non-renewable source, fossil fuels, such as coal, petroleum, and natural gas. The country is one of the leading producers of coal, though most of it is exported. This coal is used for the heating in the richer parts of the city and industrial work to power the furnaces. Petroleum is used as fuel for vehicles and machinery that runs on it. Coal is used in the creation of many chemicals, such as synthetic fibers and plastics, all of which are produced in major factories that are then exported. The second available environmental resource is soil. The soil in a tropical rainforest is typically very washed out or strongly leached, with large amounts of nutrients and minerals being removed from the subsoils and considerable thickness of rock broken down to produce soil. The top layer is where the most decaying matter is, making it the best for growing plants. In West Java, the soil is actually fertile because of the deposits that the Citron River carries, although it is becoming extremely dangerous to farm near the river because of chemicals and heavy metals being deposited by things like feces and industrial waste. Lower income citizens continue to use the soil for farming because they have no other way to get food. Higher class citizens can import food. The third environmental resource is water. The river in West Java supports thousands of species of animals, both aquatic and land organisms. There used to be an abundance of ponds and fish, but contamination has made them extinct in different parts of the river. Today, it is used to support agriculture, water supply, fishery, industry, sewage, and electricity. Many of the underdeveloped villages are completely dependent on the Citroen River for food, water, and money. Larger cities look at the Citron River as a dumping ground for their waste because there is nowhere else to put it. The past 10 years have seen a sharp increase in the contamination of the river. The fourth environmental resource is atmosphere quality. The quality of West Java's air is not too bad. There are very small traces of pollution in the villages and cities which come from cars and cattle. Around the mines and factories, the pollution has a higher concentration and being around it has led to cases of lung cancer and other respiratory diseases. 
The river is extremely dangerous in some parts because of the fumes that come off of it from plastics and burning materials, but for the most part, the atmosphere quality is okay. The fifth environmental resource is land availability. Most of the land in West Java has been developed for farming. Thousands of acres a year are destroyed for lumber, farming, paper products, and human development. Only a small percentage remains of the original tropical rainforest. There are a few national parks around Indonesia that are trying to conserve the rainforest, but there is no official protected land. Poachers often take land from these parks because the government lacks effective laws that protect the land. Illegal logging and deforestation have led to a severe decline in untouched land. The final environmental resource is wildlife. The plants and animals of West Java are unique to that part of the world. There are species that are only found on West Java, like the Javan hippo. Poachers that sell animals through complex trade chains often exploit wildlife. Animals are sold for their body parts in Chinese markets or brought in from foreign places. Invasive species brought in by humans have hurt the wildlife because they are spreading without the help of humans, such as Australian cows. Harmful human activities have endangered the wildlife that live near the Citron River. Housing in West Java consists of small one-story houses that are centered on a common area. They have very close ties with their neighbors, though most of them lack running water. The Sichuan River has many villages that are very underdeveloped, so these people use the Sichuan River for drinking, bathing, and cleaning water. In larger cities, they have mostly apartments that are often run down. People who have separate houses often use the part, part of their house for their small businesses. Places in the city do have running water, but oftentimes the water does come from the polluted Sichuan River. The next land uses, usage is farmland. Farmland is the biggest land usage in West Java. Typically these farms will grow crops as opposed to raising animals, although there are always some animals on the farm. The typical crops grown are rice and palm oil. Farmers often use a technique called contour plowing which adhere to the curves of the land and save water. Rice crops need a lot of water to ward off pests. Palm oil farms need a growing amount of acreage to go with the world demand. The typical farm structure consists of a main building, often with the farmers living in the same building as the animals. Farmers typically do not have barns, but a small shed with supplies. The third land usage is for business and human services. West Java has open-air markets where people buy food straight from the farmers. These open-air markets are also where people sell their own products. The Citron River is also characterized by the amount of factories that line its banks. These are producers of plastics, metals, cosmetics, clothing, and many more products. They make things for major companies such as Gap, Brooks Brothers, and Nike. There are human services in West Java, like police stations and fire stations, but these places are rarely used because the Indonesian government lacks a solid funding for them. The next land usage is natural resource. There are water treatment plants in West Java, but these provide water for those who can afford it, and most of the population is very poor. The poor people often get their water straight from the river and use it for cooking and bathing. They also use it for washing laundry and machinery from farming. There are no sewage treatment plants in West Java or near the Citron River. The main power stations are located where the dams are located. They use the river's tides to push turbines which then create electricity. There are many mines located in West Java because Indonesia is one of the top producers of coal and some precious metals. There are many conservation parks in the West Java province of Indonesia. The wildlife reserve of Ujong Kulon is found on the tip of the West Javan Island, where many species of animals are taken care of and scientists study the inland volcanoes of the region. Other parks that double as a recreational and conservation park are Alas Puro, Baluran, and Gunung Morathi. These parks are similar to those in the United States in that they allow people to interact with the tropical rainforest and they have hike paths to walk through the forest. They also work as a conservation park in that they are often preserving the biodiversity that was once found in the tropical rainforest. They help rehabilitate injured animals and reintroduce them back into the natural environment. The roads in West Java are commonly paved roads, most found in most of the cities and villages with some dirt roads. Sidewalks and other walkways are not commonly found in Indonesia. 
People, animals, and vehicles share the road and are heavily used to transport materials to the surrounding towns. There is not that much environmental impact from the maintenance of the roads because they are not well kept in the city. There is also very minimal impact of wildlife on these roads. The land is most commonly used to farm rice, raise livestock, such as cows, pigs, sheep, and goats. It is also used for housing, mining, and harnessing energy. The use of land impacts the resources because the more land use there is, the more resources are used and most of them cannot be replenished. One possible improvement for the resource of energy would be to add green technology into the Indonesian area. A way to do this would be cleaning the, out the dams to, to produce more energy from the Citron River. A way of improving water would be enforcing pollution laws so that large corporations could not harm the ecosystem by dumping waste. Another way would be adding sewage treatment plants to cities so they do not use the river. Lastly, <laughs> adding running water to small towns would be beneficial because they would not use the polluted water of the Citron River. A way of improving soil would be educating farmers so that they understood new methods of farming such as crop rotation and drip irrigation systems. We would also educate them to not use chemical fertilizers and things to keep bugs away and instead use natural predators. A way of improving air would be making laws restricting large corporations and mining companies from letting out too much carbon dioxide and other harmful gases into the environment. A way of improving wildlife would be laws against poaching and further investigation into trade chains. Another improvement would be an increase in national parks and a stop in the, import in the importing of Australian cows. Some incentives to support these improvements would be tax reductions, better government benefits, more trade, and money. Because of human activity, the Citron River has become polluted, leading to the endangerment of many of its species. This includes the sp Okay. Large problem because if there was no pollution, the biosphere would be... Just kidding, I don't know what I'm saying. The biosphere is... Are we doing a bio? We're not even doing a biosphere. Can we just throw this in here anyway? Okay, okay thank you for watching our video. We'll... <clears throat> uh, we're not putting this in the, no. Ponies throw, pull, throw, blah, 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 blah. okay, Fern, I'm the worst speaker ever. <laughs> I, I, okay, I, wait, Fern, oh, you messed up the video. And also, putting running water in villages would help a lot. <laughs> okay. Temperatures of ooh, six to eight. No, okay, I didn't want to say.